One of the toughest product interview questions are usually trade-off questions. Those are questions like, how would you decide between X versus Y? Or should we do X? And you're only given five or 15 minutes to think through a thoughtful answer. So in this video, we're gonna cover how long each section of the trade-off framework should take you in answering the question, and what are tips so that you can be more efficient and faster at answering these questions to impress the interviewer in five to 15 minutes. Hey guys, I'm Diana and I'm a senior product manager at a large tech company based in Silicon Valley, California. So here we're talking about the trade-off question. And here you probably get anywhere from five to 15 minutes to answer this question because the interview is about 45 minutes long. Five minutes of that is intro and outro. And then 20 minutes of that is you answering the goal setting question, which I did a similar video on and I'll link it in the description below. So because this is gonna be one part of the question in the interview, you wanna make sure you manage your time really well, which means if you're given a goal setting question, make sure to not spend 30 minutes on it so that traps you to only have 10 minutes to spend on the trade-off question. So let's go through the trade-off question. So the first part of this trade-off question, which is the same case for any question in the execution question, is product understanding. So here, you'll wanna show the interviewer that you understand the product, which includes understanding what the product is used for, who are the key stakeholders using the product, what is the value that they're getting from the product, and most importantly, what is the user flow? So this part is mostly for the interviewee to get a sense and grasp the key parts of the product so they understand the core value. If you miss this part, you might struggle to come up with a core part or hypotheses for the trade-off question. But sometimes you might not even need to cover this in the trade-off because the trade-off question usually is a follow-on from goal setting. So if they're asking you about the same product, you already covered it in the goal setting question. And here, then you would skip to the second step. But if you do have to cover product understanding, you'll spend about five minutes here. And where you can save time here is you don't have to talk about how the product aligns to the company's mission. You don't have to talk about how the product competes with other products. Those are not gonna necessarily help you here. Things that you definitely don't wanna skip in this portion is talking about the user flow. So don't skip going through the user funnel on how the different sides of the ecosystem use the product. Now the second section of the trade-off question is the hypothesis. Here, what you want to cover is what is the impact on the product with the change that they're talking about or between option A versus option B. You'll want to talk about the positive and negative impacts of this change. You'll want to talk about the impact for the short term versus long term. And you'll want to talk about the impact for the different users of this product. That's how you're going to ensure that you're holistically thinking about the impact of this change. And once you do that, it'll become a bit clearer what the actual trade-off is. This trade-off is basically what you're getting, but also what you're giving up. If you only have five minutes to answer this question, well, this is the most important part that you wanna to get to, to show and give the interviewer signal that you can think through trade-off questions and have the product leadership to prioritize the right things. So here, you wanna spend about five minutes. Now, if you have more than five minutes, the next section you wanna talk about are the metrics that are being impacted. So here, you're actually taking the impact analysis that you did in the last part in hypothesis and translating that into how it's gonna impact certain metrics. Why? Because on the job, when you're figuring out whether you should launch something, you're first gonna do an A-B test. And for the A-B test to analyze it, you need metrics to be able to make a decision. So these metrics are what you would use to set up the A-B test. You'll wanna spend about three minutes here and things that you can skip Again, here, you can save time by not being overly exhaustive. Anywhere from two to five metrics will suffice. Don't treat this like a goal setting question where you come up with 10 metrics. Something you don't wanna skip or shy away from is acknowledging competing effects. Oftentimes, you might have multiple hypotheses on how a product change is gonna affect one single metric. 
and they might be in opposite directions. And you really won't know which one's gonna net to have a larger effect and hence push the metric in which direction unless you A-B test. So here, don't skip this part because you think the interviewer wants to hear just one way that the product is gonna be impacted. But you'll be able to stand out like a product leader when you're thinking of all the different scenarios that could happen from this change. And generally, it's gonna be hard to assess whether our hypotheses are validated or invalidated unless we actually do a test. So here, what you wanna cover is talk about what is gonna be the control and the test part of the A-B test. A bonus thing you could consider adding is what might be other tests that you can consider to solve the problem or the goal that this change was initially aimed to do. This part is optional, but it's hugely gonna help you stand out amongst other candidates. So the time you should spend here is roughly about a minute. And here, you're gonna wanna save time by not going to do too much details on the A-B test mechanics. You'll wanna stick to just saying, I wanna test that statistically significant by making sure that I run it for a long enough time and that I'm testing it on a random sample that I can then generalize to the rest of my population. Do not go into how long you would run the test for, saying whether it's two weeks or a month. Don't go into the specifics of what percentage of the population you would test this on because these details, you're not gonna be able to figure out and it's not a one size fits all, but rather it's going to be specific to each A-B test. And your data scientist would help you there to do a power analysis or power calculation to tell you those specific things. So avoid attaching specific numbers. And lastly, you're gonna to wanna to cover the ship, no ship scenarios. For trade-off questions, there's not gonna be a very clear-cut answer or decision that you get to at the end of the question. And if you are getting to an obvious situation or clear-cut answer, the question was either way too easy or you probably didn't think about all the varying hypotheses that could impact the product. Because most times, the prompt that they're giving you is gonna be complicated because you're gonna get something that benefits but also you're gonna sacrifice some things. So here, instead of getting to one decision, what you wanna show is if I got this data point and this metric moving in certain directions, then I would wanna ship. If I saw the metric move in this direction and this direction, then I would not ship. So you're basically showing a decision tree. So you'll wanna spend about three minutes here and where you can save time, here you should also avoid sharing specific numbers like oh, the metric went up by 5% and the other metric went down by 10%. Those specificity and numbers are gonna get you more questions than be impressive as answers. Why? Because you're not gonna know whether it's 2% or 5% and you might not even be able to compare a 5% increase versus a 10% decrease in another metric. So assigning numbers might overcomplicate it. What you don't wanna skip is talking about complex scenarios. So a lot of the times these are when one metric goes in one direction, let's say going up, and another metric that you care about goes in another direction going down. In those cases, what would you do? These are the opportunities to show your product thinking. So don't avoid these because it's not gonna be impressive if you say, oh, if both metrics that I care about go up, I'm gonna ship it the hard decisions and the times when product leadership is gonna be needed is when it's not clear if two metrics we care about move in different directions, what do we do? I have two more additional tips for you, but before we go into it, if you haven't already, take a second to like the video and subscribe to the channel so that when we come out with new content, you'll be the first to be notified. So my two additional tips, number one, get to the hypothesis quickly. I mentioned the hypothesis section is the most essential part of the trade-off question because it talks about the impact of the product change that you're thinking about and gets to the heart of the actual trade-off. And two, I mentioned avoid specific numbers in the trade-off question because that's only gonna get you in trouble and get you questions on why you chose 5% versus 2%. The next step I want you to do is go through a trade-off question and then figure out which of the sections are taking you the longest and see if the times that you're hitting are matching the times that I gave. Check out these two videos where we go through how to get faster answering product sense, product strategy questions, and goal setting success metric questions. I'll see you guys in the next video.